Now that we have created our particle emission fragments, we will address one very common problem when emitting trails. But before that, let me start setting up the actual simulation. So let's dive into the DOP network. Remember, we already created a few attributes for the pop source, namely the emission type, but we haven't created birth nor velocity attributes. So let's start with the velocity. So remember by default, the particles will inherit the velocity of the geometry emitting them. So by default, the inherited velocity will be the same as the velocity from the geometry, which usually is very high. So if you press play, you'll notice how all of these particles just blast away and they don't look very natural. So first of all, I'm going to decrease the inherited velocity to 0.1. and this will look much better. Now another thing that we can do is instead of just leaving this at inherit velocity we can add to inherited velocity a vector and even a variance. So the variance will spread the particles apart which usually is nice on the trailing. So the larger this variance number is the more they will spread. For example, if I increase this a lot, say to 4, now we have particles shooting almost everywhere. So I'm going to go with 0.5. I may revisit this later, but one of the main things I do, and I did this with a fire exercise, is I create a pop property node to create a randomized mass. So let's call this node set mass. Let's click on the mass property and click on use vex expression. So here on the drop down, let's look for randomized mass and it will usually go from 0.7 to 1. I'll decrease this just a little bit to go from 0.5 to 1. And now let's add a gravity force. So there's two main ways to add gravity with particles. One would be the standard gravity node, which we already used with RBDs. So you could connect the gravity down here. And this would work but I usually use a pop force instead. This will let me use VEX to control it and it will also take into the count the mass of the particles. So let me delete this one and instead let's add a pop force. Let's connect it here on the main tree. Let's call this gravity and let's change the downward force to minus 9.8 meters. So that's looking good. Now a very important thing, remember these nodes by default have the ignore mass option on. So let's turn this off and now the gravity will have much more influence in the particles that have greater mass and this will randomize a bit the positions of these particles. Now another very important node that I usually use is the pop drag. So remember everything from sand, water, even rocks and debris have a certain amount of friction to air. So let's connect this here and the default of one is usually extremely high. I'm going to bring this down to 0.1 and again, make sure to turn off ignore mass. Now the particles will gradually start to slow down as the friction kicks in. Finally, let's take care of the life of the particles. So make sure to select the pop source, go to your birth attributes and bring down the life expectancy. For now, let's use one and life variance 0.2, so usually add a little bit of variance. And we will also increase the constant birth rate.
Okay, so this starts to look nice. Now, I was talking about a very common problem with this kind of effects that have very fast moving objects. And you can see it here very clearly. You can see this stepping that looks very unnatural. Now, the first thing that would come to mind is, remember we talked about the substeps, and this is a general attribute from the DOP network. Let's try increasing the substeps to something crazy, for example, 20, and press play. Now, we would think that this issue of stepping would be fixed, but notice how it's almost exactly the same, if not the same, as with one substep. And what's happening here is, even if the particles are emitting 20 times between each frame, the geometry that has been cached is always moving exactly the same distance every frame. So that's a bit tricky to fix. It's not complicated, but you need to understand that since this is a cached geometry, so remember if we go back to our cached geo, every time we move forward or backward, the geometry will be moving the exact same distance. Now, here's a nice trick. If you go down here to the bottom left corner and click on the global animation options, you can turn off integer frame values and change the stepping to a fraction value, for example, 0.1. So let's apply this. And now if I step the animation gradually with the left and right arrows, you'll notice that even when I have fractional frame values, the geometry is not moving in this in-between frames. So to fix this, there's a very nice node that's called time blend. So I will just lay down a time blend and plug it in after the unpack. So now let's see the difference. I'll step 0.1 frame at a time. And now the geometry is being time blended between each frame. Now, there's something important to consider. This works only with geometry that is not changing topology or phase counts. But in general, 99% of the time, an RBD simulation won't change topology. So we're good with a time blend in this case. So let's go back to our camera view. Again, let's try and see if our particles are looking better. This time, the blending should be much better. So let's press play. Of course, the 20 sub-steps may be too much for this case, but still the simulation is being calculated relatively fast. So let's go back to our sub-steps. Let's bring them down to 4, just for now. Again, let's dive into our DOP network and press play. And this is working much nicer. So let's turn off, or actually let's turn back on integer frame values. Apply. And we're ready to continue. 